Physics 1071, Lab 1, Take 7. <laughs> it's like Take 6. <laughs> so uh, this is an intro video just so you guys see some of the stuff that is a little bit uh, difficult to kind of conceptualize when you're just reading about it in the lab manual. And also introduce the physics of what you guys are actually doing. So Lab 1 is on Snell's Law. This is probably the most common way of seeing Snell's Law and N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Um, what that means is really in, kind of encapsulated in this picture. So just to make things concrete, let's just say air and water. Um, but this is true about any two interfaces. So I have a light ray that's leaving air and it's about to enter water. And what you know, you've probably seen any number of times is that the light rays seem to bend and what we say refract. So the angle at which the water enters air, so from the normal, everything's from the normal, so we'll call this theta 1, and then it bends as it goes into the optically dense material, in this case water. Um, we'll measure angles again from the normal, so that's theta 2. And this again was just observed empirically. And maybe this was first done, I think, in like the ninth century. Uh, maybe they didn't use signs, but they definitely described this geometric relationship. So the question that's more recent and uh, also physical is what is this n? So what is the index of refraction? It turns out that the index of refraction is the ratio of the speed of light in that material to the speed of light in vacuum. So light in vacuum travels at that absurdly high rate of speed, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and if it goes more slowly the details will be derived in uh, lecture. But one uh, consequence of it going more slowly, and for instance, water versus air, is that it'll bend. And it'll bend according to that. So in fact, as you witness light rays bending and you do this experiment, what you're doing is you're actually indirectly measuring the speed of light in that material, which otherwise would be very, very difficult. So just as an example, if you have something that has an index of refraction 2, so this would be a really dense gemstone. Diamond is 2.4. Emerald is about 2.2, I think. Um, what you measured is that the speed of light for that thing with index of refraction 2.0, because we got two sig figs, um, would be 1.5 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So again, you'll do the geometry of investigating Snell's law, making sure this relationship holds, and then along the way you'll realize, like, hey, what I'm actually doing is measuring the speed of light. Okay, so until I disturb the water, uh, here's a Snell's law demo. So this actually is set up to measure the index so I measure the angles the way that we'd like to measure them from normal. So 0 degrees is normal. So 60 degrees going in, air. And then, if you can see that, about 42 degrees going out. And then I'll move this down to demonstrate something else. So if I make this 42 degrees leaving water, I see it's about 60 degrees in air. So light bends the same way air to water, water to air. But then something interesting happens if I do this. I actually have what's called total internal reflection. So that's one of the last things you guys will investigate. So basically, there's an angle that's so big that you break the sine. So sine cannot spit out angles greater than 90 degrees. Okay. So the more precise data that you'll take, I'll scoot this over, and Chris can, like, maybe. Can you see that? Okay. Um, so this is a really nice geometry, this D-shaped lens, because there's no way that I can turn this so that I don't get this laser beam coming in directly on, the, uh, on normal. So as long as I'm shooting it at the center of this, this is always normal. And what you can see is the only refraction I care about is the one where it leaves, in this case, the acrylic into air. So this, and I can see total internal reflection again, goes through there. So what you'll be furnished with is really nice high quality images of what you would have otherwise been doing in lab to so these. And Chris will show you how to uh, analyze them with the software. But basically precise measurements of exactly that. In the second part, you'll use a water and Tupperware container and you'll investigate Snell's law with one, two refractions. So there's one refraction here and another refraction there. And one of the questions to ask yourself is, if this refraction stuff is so serious, um, should I be scared when I'm driving my car and I'm looking through this refraction-causing windshield? So the answer is probably not, but maybe I should convince myself that that's true and would not be true if I had a really, really thick windshield. 
Um, so this is what you guys will do, since you probably don't have access to precisely milled acrylics, is you will use water and measure the index of refraction of uh, water and compare it to its nominal value with something like this. So probably you don't have one of these cool lasers that spreads itself out, so there's another way of figuring out how to do this. And now we'll... Yeah, that's my turn. I am the guy who's subjecting you to all this stuff. Um, and, uh, I'm, I'm the one who MacGyvered these labs for you. So, I'm Chris. Um, so, the program we're going to be using to analyze those, the D-shaped lens, is ImageJ. Um, that's described in the manual. Um, when you open ImageJ, you're going to end up with this teeny little rectangle. It looks pretty innocuous. That's our, that's our program. Um, so we'll take ImageJ, we will open a file in ImageJ. If I open one of the pictures that you can find on Canvas, it'll look something like that. Um, then we'll choose this little angle tool, it looks like an angle, um, and make a few measurements. I'm going to click, click. Um, you're clicking all like the start, the middle of your angle, what your inflection point, and then you're going to drag out to along the direction of the last the, of your beam. Um, and over in this box, there's a little um, little mark that says angle equals 60.90. Uh, that's given in degrees. Um, and as you drag it around, that number is going to change. If I click this, if I'm happy and done, and I click it the angle disappears, just a little note, a um, little thing to be careful of. Um, if you click on any of these points again and start dragging it around, the angle pops up again, so you can start making your measurements again. Um, so, cool. You can make your, make your measurements that way, you can, flip that, you can flip it around, so we're making it with respect to, ah, measure it from the other side to the other angle as well, um, if you want. Well, not if you want, you kind of have to. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's the, la the uh, first part of the lab when you're just doing the angles. Um, next part of it, so we talked about how you don't have this fancy little laser thing that'll spread out your laser for you. So we have to MacGyver this stuff pretty, bad, pretty hard. Um, so we need a way of creating a thin beam of light. And that's where good old TV dinners come in. Um, I've got a box. Um, I was a very, I'm a very hungry man. I'm a big guy. <laughs> um, so I took that, um, cut a little slit, a few inches tall, um, you know, maybe five centimeters tall since we're in physics. Um, on one side, maybe a millimeter thick or so, or two millimeters thick. Um, that gives me a nice little thin slit so that the light, um, so I can just shine a thin little piece of light through there. Um, now the next, next important thing is we need parallel light. Because um, I can go ahead and shine my, yeah, let's turn off the front light. I can shine a light through this, let's see. And if I shine a light through it, um, should be able to kind of see that this is really spreading out like crazy. That's not going to help us at all. The light is spreading out way too much. We're not going to get a good, good measurement out of there. So what we need is we need to create, um, we need to create some parallel light beams so that this is going to come out nice and straight, nice and thin. So how you do that is you set this thing back a ways, set it back a good you know, half a meter or so. Um, lean it up against something, and then that should create a nice thin beam right here um, that you can make nice little measurements on. Um, so it should be able to should be able to see the beam coming into here. Um, with a little bit of luck, you can see the whole the whole thing coming in, coming out. Um, you'll trace these the incident and refracted lines on the paper. Um, and then once you've got those tra traced out and you trace the walls of your um, container, um, it's pretty easy to just connect the dots to see where the light was traveling inside the water. It's a nice straight line thing. Um, and on that, I think, eh, 
you can also all the uh, all the other stuff basically builds off of that. Um, when you're doing looking at um, refraction, just turn this to a pretty sharp angle. It should be able to, or not refraction, uh, dispersion. Um, should be able to turn this to a pretty sharp angle and see the light coming out um, at a pretty high, pretty steep angle. Um, if I do it right. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm kind of doing it right. Meh, that's idea for you to work with. It'll still be left as an exercise to the reader, I think. <laughs> Hard to get on camera anyways. Alright, that's our episode. We'll see you again in next week. <laughs>